Hi, and welcome to this video introducing metacognitive strategies. Today, we'll be looking at what metacognitive strategies are, how they can help students, and how you can implement them in the classroom. Firstly, what are learning strategies? Weinstein and Mayer describe learning strategies as including mental and physical processes which are consciously controlled and selected by the learners to overcome challenging tasks. Learning strategies are classified into several general types which interact and support each other. The three types are cognitive learning strategies, metacognitive learning strategies and social affective learning strategies. In this video we're going to focus on cognitive and metacognitive learning strategies. Cognitive strategies are one type of learning strategy that learners use in order to learn more successfully. Strategies include repetition, organizing language, summarizing meaning, guessing meaning, and using imagery for memorization. All of these strategies involve deliberate manipulation of language, either mentally or physically, to improve learning you'll already be employing many of these strategies in the classroom. For instance, if the learner tries to remember new words by visualizing them represented in a memorable or ridiculous situation, this makes it easier and faster to recall these words in the classroom. Activities which can be described as cognitive strategies include making mind maps, visualization, association, monomics, using clues in reading comprehension, underlining key words, scanning, and self-testing and monitoring. In the graphic you can see some of the general types of cognitive tasks which are often used in the classroom. The best students however can plan, monitor and evaluate which kind of strategies work best and when to use them. Students who display this kind of behavior often make much greater progress. This brings us to metacognitive strategies. Metacognitive strategies are often described as thinking about thinking. These are the strategies which learners need to reflect on and identify their abilities and approaches to learning. For example, a student might consider how successful they were during a task, which strategies they did or did not use, which kind of strategies did they find most helpful, useful or difficult and what they might do in future to improve their performance on a specific kind of skill. As a result of this kind of process, learners will become increasingly autonomous in their learning since they are aware of their strengths and weaknesses. Tracy Gerben identified three types of knowledge that students need in order to develop and choose the best strategies. The first is the person variable. This is the knowledge and beliefs a learner has about their own or other students' abilities as learners. The second is the task variable. Students need knowledge of available information, resources and task difficulty. The third and final variable is the strategy variable. Students must identify goals, including the thought and action required to complete these goals. Students can use this knowledge to prepare and plan for learning select and use strategies, monitor strategy use, orchestrate different strategies together, and evaluate strategy use and learning. So how can we include these ideas in a real classroom? Let's take a look at a three-part model which will help us to plan sections in which students get to develop their metacognitive knowledge and strategies. Part 1 is planning. This allows the learner to preview initial ideas of how to accomplish a learning task. This is an example of the worksheet a teacher uses before a reading task. Students use it to evaluate what they already know, what they're trying to find out, and the strategies that they're going to use to do that. This strategy evaluation matrix is a tool a teacher can use with the students for them to identify strategies they might want to use. Part 2 is monitoring. This happens during the class as the students are accomplishing the tasks. Learners monitor their progress and check language comprehension and production. In order to do this, the students must pause and take time to reflect on how things are going. The teacher can help by using tools like this one from the same reading class. The last part is evaluating. 
The learners consider and evaluate how well they accomplish the learning task, how well the strategies they use work, and what they might do the same or differently in the future. During the evaluation, they are already taking steps to plan for the next time.